ensuring this mutual fulfillment among themselves and with human being human being also has a natural acceptance for ensuring this mutual fulfillment so all that needs to be done right is on the part of the human being the rest of nature is already ensuring this mutual fulfillment so the question which we have raised in the morning that we all want to be in harmony at the level of individual at the level of family at the level of society but whether it is possible for us to be in harmony with human nature or not so the answer is that nature is already in harmony only human being has to understand this harmony and live in this harmony so everything is in order okay human being also wants to be in order for that all that it requires is the right understanding right understanding of the harmony in nature right understanding about this four orders about their basic characteristic about their basic inheritance right and particularly about the basic characteristic and inheritance of the human being so the major work that is required to be done is at the level of human being and that is also you know it should be done at the level of education and sanskar so if proper work is done at the level of education and sanskar then human being will have right understanding right feeling and therefore living with continuous happiness which is the basic characteristic of human being and if we are living with this we will become the source of education and sanskar for the next generation so this is what has to be done right and you can see that this does not involve physical facility physical facility is not the major component of this right understanding and right feeling is the major component for ensuring this so this is what needs to be done for human being if this is done for the human being then human being is living in harmony with other human being then it is living in harmony with the animal world the pranic order and the physical order and i describe what we need to do for the animal order okay for the pran for the physical order we have to ensure their existence right for the pranic order we have to ensure their growth existence plus growth for the animal order we have to ensure their will to live so we are interacting with the animal order we have to make sure that their will to live is fulfilled when we are interacting with the pranic order we have to make sure that their existence and the growth is ensured when we are interacting with the physical order we have to make sure that their existence is ensured so if i am interacting with this soil right i have to make sure that the quality of this soil the fertility of this soil is ensured right it is enriched when i am interacting with the plants i have to make sure that their existence and their growth is maintained it is rather enriched when i am interacting with the animal order i have to make sure that will to live is ensured and when i am interacting with human being i have to make sure that it's you know will to live with continuous happiness is ensured that is by way of right understanding and right feeling every human being is to be able to live 
set of continuous happiness. So this is what I need to do for human being, for animal, for pranic order and the physical order. <coughs> And you can see when it comes to these three orders, it is already fulfilled, right? If you look at it in the forest, all this is fulfilled. This is something which is at stake. So this has to be ensured. If this is ensured, then this all can be ensured. understand this harmony and living this
Yeah, and I have no comment to make. <laughs> I think you know what you want to do. This is what is required to be done. <coughs> when we don't do this, we do many other things. <laughs> We are not able to multiply the right kind of people you know, through education and scars. Then we have to preserve them. Right? But it is better to multiply them through education and scars or better to just preserve them. to hand over this kingdom. So he asked his advisor. So he gave him some advice. So King said, fine. Okay. So he called all these three boys and they said, <coughs> I am going out for a few years. So I am giving you some seeds. Okay. And you have to preserve them. Okay. So when I come back, on the basis of how best we have preserved it, I will decide whom to hand over the kingdom. <coughs> so he went back and came back after a few years. So he asked the first son, you know, what did you do about it? He said, very simple, I just sold those seeds <coughs> in the market. I have kept the money with me. So you, whenever you want, I can buy those seeds back and give it to you. So, so simple. The other fellow said, I have preserved them in a very safe case, you know. So when it was taken out, it turned out that it had all got rotten. <laughs> because anyway they will get rotten after some time. That's the nature of the thing. So, when the child was asked, he took him to a field and he showed him that how the seeds have multiplied over the years. What do you think? Which one is better to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So multiply. <coughs> if you just preserve it in the case, <laughs> it is not going to work. So even with the seed, we have to do this. Each human being, it has to go through education and sanskara and multiply. If it does not happen, it will be good. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, let's see, any other question? One, uh, one more uh, doubt. I think uh, Guruji might have some, co some comment on this. <coughs> He's passed this uh, education and sanskar and yeah. passing on to next generation. Mm, uh, I'm not quite sure whether uh, by providing some. Uh, it whether we can totally brainwash if somebody is bo born with certain potential <coughs> during his birth by through education sanskar, certain innate, if it is a natural, uh, I mean, natural acceptable existence or whatsoever, then there ought to be like a seed, certain innate potentialities within <coughs> an individual which cannot <coughs> totally. <coughs> Done away with, but only we can modify or develop to a certain extent. Yes, but you can see what we have been talking about all these six days is about that innate, you know, quality of every human being. Right? We said natural acceptance, which is innate, which is inherent, which is invariant, right? and which is also universal. <coughs> And that is what we are trying to access. I am not asking you to, you know, change your natural acceptance. 
that I am only trying to draw your attention to it. That is why my job is very simple. Just to put forward the proposal. Draw your attention towards it. Right? Ask you to verify on the basis of your natural acceptance. And that natural acceptance is already there in you. So we are not trying to brainwash or dump something from outside. We are only making you aware of what is your natural acceptance, what is inert in you, what is inherent in you, what is intact, invariant in you. So that is all that we are doing. That is why I keep telling my job is very simple. I don't have to create something. I only have to draw your attention. And you all have the willingness to understand. You know, understand what is right. Do what is right. And you all have the capacity to understand what is right. So with that as the background, okay, it is easier to ensure this process of education and sanskar. In fact, quite a few of you must be now feeling that over the last five, six days, right? So many questions have been raised within your own self. Like many of the things which you consider very valuable. Like you yourself now feel it is not valuable. Like you may even start laughing at it with how could you carry it so much, so long, okay, without even looking at it once. Right? So, it is you who are carrying this, right? It is you who is able to see your natural acceptance. Right? It is you who is able to evaluate this on the basis of your natural acceptance. So this is something which is there inherent in us. This is our inherent quality. Only thing is that we have not been paying attention to it. Now we have, what we have done is, we have very systematically investigated into it, right? found it out, okay? and now that is slowly becoming the basis of our desire, thought and expectation. That is our sanskar. Right? So this is what is you know, the process of purification of your sanskar. Your sanskar which were born out of this preconditioning and sensation are now being purified. Right? You are making sure that they are coming through your natural acceptance, through your right understanding, right? and not through preconditioning and sensation. <coughs> Guruji, uh, beyond these four orders, do you also have other orders? No, in terms of units, no. The only reality which we have not talked about till now and which we are going to talk about when we talk about harmony in existence is the space. <coughs> so the space we have not talked about till now, but we have talked about all units. So if you look at all the units, which is what we call as nature, then they are in these four orders. So space is still left, right? And that is what we want to talk about when we talk about harmony in nature. Uh, sorry, harmony in existence. Uh, well, I had a question which actually is partially answered. Uh, I raised my hand uh, in the morning, but I didn't get the uh, opportunity. But uh, I, I went back and reflected, and I actually went through some kind of self-exploration. And uh, in fact, it would be better if it is for me alone, if I don't ask this question. But I think uh, the understanding is that uh, when we get back, we have to teach this uh, module to our students. But uh, I think uh, there's not that much of the last question about other order. Uh, should there be other order than this four? And my concern was about these uh, two elements, which uh, rise by Dakshua uh, in the morning also, air and water. Because what we see in this four order is only those tangible, uh, tangible things in nature. 
but uh, you said space is not here. So actually my suggestion or proposal was that if we can have another order which includes uh, intangible uh, things in nature like air and uh, uh, what, uh, what which are not uh, tangible in nature because we can still have the relation with those elements with respect to human being and other other three orders. Yes, this air we have to put here. We have to put this count, you know. The water is already there. <laughs> well, I meant what I meant was air and light. <laughs> heat. Yeah, this heat is the specific characteristic of one of these or you know, units. Okay. For example, the bulb giving you the light. Like, what is it? <coughs> that filament <coughs> is very heated. Okay. It's a particular state of that filament. But after all it is filament, right? It is this, you know, it is in physical order. <coughs> the sound, right? Like when you play upon the guitar, right? These things are strings, right? They belong to physical order. But when you are playing on that, then certain vibration is taking place. That vibration is giving down some effect on your ear. Right? That is what you call sound. Similarly, when you are heating up this filament, okay, it may give rise to certain you know, intensity of heat. And if that intensity is within the limit of the eyes, okay, you see it as light. If it is outside the limit of your eyes, you will not see it as light. You know that, right? The wavelength of the light which you see okay, is very limited. So any wavelength outside this or any frequency outside this is not seen by you. For example, we have microwave you know, all around by which you use your mobile, okay. but you are not able to see that microwave, you know, it? because that frequency is beyond your, you know, limit of the eyes. So basically, this heat, light, sound. You, uh, what you call light today, you know, I mean, there is see, a different meaning of light also, but what you mean by light today is you know, that particular heat you know, state of some you know, physical things. They all have to do with the state of this. <coughs> and if you look at the present society, I mean, the major work is being done on this, not on this. So all this having car and a big house and all these things, you know, good clothes and all this has to do with this. So the modern society is largely working on this physical order, rarely working on this and this and hardly working on this. <laughs> this is the most, you know, kind of neglected thing. In fact, I keep telling that today we are trying to make machines like human beings and human beings like machines. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the meaning of modern management. <laughs> Okay, so what I would do is <coughs> start some discussion <coughs> on this harmony in existence <coughs> and we can come back to this harmony in nature as and when required. <coughs> so,
So let's look at the existence. The existence means whatever exists. <coughs> it exists in a definite order. And that definite order can be understood. The definite harmony can be understood. So if you try to understand this, you see that there are two types of reality. One is the unit about which we have talked earlier. Right the other is space. So there is space. There are units. And these units are in the space. So you can see this space. You can see the <coughs> units. And you can see that these units are in the space. So that is what the whole existence is, right? And if you describe the units, this is the description of the units. So the space is there, the units are there, and these units are in space. So if you look at the existence, it is in the form of coexistence. It is in the form of units submerged in space. Right. So you can see the units are always in space. So the space is there, the unit is there, the unit is in space, right. and this unit is submerged in space. That's how the whole existence is. You can never separate these units from this space. They are all in space and they are submerged in space. And that is how you can see an unit. The unit is seen always in space. So this is one unit which is in space. So these are two units in space. So the unit is there, this space is there, this is space. This unit is in space. This unit is also in space. So always this unit is in space. And it is submerged in space. What is the meaning of submerged is what we will describe. So let us try to look at them one by one. So if you look at the existence, There is units, there is a space. If you look at these units, they are limited in size. They may be small, they may be big, right? but they are all limited in size. So for example, this pen is an unit, it is small in size. If you look at the earth, earth is also an unit. Is it limited in size, unlimited in size? <laughs> and the sun is thousand times bigger than the earth. Right? Is it limited or unlimited? Limited. limited. So these units are limited in size, they may be small, they may be big. But if you look at this space, this is unlimited. 